Hi, everybody. Tim Hughes here. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. With me today, I've got uh, AJ Walters, and we're going to be talking about how to empower people into your industry, so particularly younger people into the industry. And I know this is something that AJ is really, really passionate about. Um, before we get into it, AJ, um, please introduce yourself. You know, tell people where they can get hold of you. My name is Dave Waters, uh, Vice President of Industry Solutions at Innate, but you can find me either via LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn uh, slash Waters AJ, so backwards, uh, or aj.waters at innate.com is my email address. Excellent. So AJ, just give us a, um, a sense of who you are and your, your journey about how you got here, because um, we can't notice that there's a big photo of your family to, to your to, to your right, to my left, to your right. So, you know, tell us about who you are and, and, and what gets you up in the morning. Yeah, sure thing. So first and foremost, I am a husband and father. and th uh, That's my, my wife and four kids. So uh, I always love to, to, to start things off with them because that's those are the important titles in life. And, uh, and so that's what gets me up in the morning, um, being there for them and, and, uh, and hopefully setting that example. But uh, I got here, my wife and I were, were married pretty young while we were still in school. And uh, I went to school to be a structural engineer, uh, got, uh, got, into, got into construction estimating and uh, got really sick of crunching numbers in a corner, if you will. Um, so as we were looking for new softwares for our estimating system in construction, I raised my hand and said, hey, I'd like to evaluate those. I'd like to help out and, uh, and teach people how to use it once we get there. And uh, apparently I did an OK job because that's what landed me at an eight, the software provider we had selected um, a few years later. So that's kind of how I, I transitioned. Technology was always a, a little bit of a... Uh, uh, Kind of a hobby for me if you will as things were changing you know in the early 2000s but uh that that's a shortened version of how i got here and i think that's it, you know it's it's a wonderful that you were the person that put your hand up and said i'd like to do that because there's so many people that kind of don't do that and right you've obviously set you on it set yourself onto a um, a journey now um when I, I'm, I just want to, I'm going to throw this at you because this is this is, and this is this is a bit of a curveball. Okay. I, but the, this is how how I came about you on LinkedIn was I was looking for interesting people to interview, um, and we have a view that there is this this new emerging thing that's taking place on social media, which we call um, uh, technical and commercial digital influencers. So you we know about influencing is in B two C, right. Kim Kardashian and people like that, but there is this emerging thing taking place in uh, business to business in B two B, where there are people that are saying, "I am going to be the center of this universe," usually the 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 niche or niche that they work in, and saying, "This is this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to define that." And what I came across was you doing that in construction. Trying anyway, <laughs> yes. What? Well, well, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, whether whether it's trying or not, this is this is about um, this is about defining that. And the thing is, is that what businesses haven't caught on cotton on to yet is that what you're able to then do is define that for construction. For you're basically defining the universe that everybody else then has to to follow. Yeah, the the goal is to you know. Construction has been so behind for so long, right? Or at least people claim they're behind. And this is this is like the 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 part of the message that that we're trying to define. In in your instance, construction really isn't behind in in digital transformations or technology. There's technology running all over job sites: drones, hollow lenses, like 3D scanners, all sorts of things. Problem is, none of it talks to each other, so it's it's not useful. You you, you have to some sort of Excel heroics or data manipulation to get everything tied back together and it becomes very difficult and you, you can't get any use out of it. That's, the, therefore, AI can't learn from it. You can't automate processes and things like that. So that's what we're trying to help you know, solve for is the disparate solutions that have holistically 
landed at construction, but you're exactly right. It, it's, it's resetting the mind a little bit and construction's not behind, they're just different and, and, and they need to maybe adjust their, their approach. Yeah. And, and you know, what I, I, I meet, I, when I came across you on LinkedIn, I thought, here's someone in construction talking about digital transformation. This is, you know, because we think of construction as as um, people with um, diggers and, and JCBs. I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure I talk in American, but I'm probably failing. Oh, no, you're you're good. Uh, caterpillars or whatever the you know the make is and and we 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 think about that um but we don't necessarily think about as you said drones and 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 those and here we have someone that's talking about digital in construction and and that i was i was i was just blown away with that which is why i, I needed to get you on here well i appreciate that we're we're trying to you know make that shift and and it it leads really well into the topic of today yes yeah. Uh, because of the, the fact that, you know, without that shift, it, it becomes really hard <laughs> to find top talent or to get them to be interested in your company if all they're doing is pushing paper all day long. Yeah. So so we often see on um, uh, on LinkedIn or in the news, people saying we can't get the staff. We can't get the talent. We can't get the right people for our industry. And I know when I was talking to you, were you saying, well, that's all very well, but we have to start actually at the beginning. Right. Which yep. is getting, getting, um, the reason why you can't get those things is you didn't excite the school lever or you didn't excite the college lever or the university lever to say, that's an industry that I want to work in. Yeah, exactly. And there's, there's a couple of different reasons for that, de depending on the industry, right? Either, either they didn't fully understand what it is you do uh, and how that can be fulfilling, rewarding, you know, all those things. Um, or you didn't do a very good job painting a picture of what you have in place to assist them in doing their job every day, which is the, you know, the technology side of the house. So it's, it's interesting because you say, you know, in, in construction, I think of, you know, diggers and gloves and dirty boots and hard hats and all those sort of, those are the things you think of uh, when you think construction but construction has all the typical roles construction companies have all the typical roles that any major company would have right so there's going to be social media people there's going to be marketers there's going to be sales representatives there's there's going to be hr personnel and uh, and so you could look at a major player in the construction industry even if you're outside of that sort of uh out sort of outside of the typical engineering functions and then you have the the rewarding side of the house where you can say i was involved in building that you know we drive across bridges every day we we go to events in major uh stadiums or 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 um theaters uh or or we visit you know train stations whatever it might be mass transit right Every one of those things were built by somebody. And the amount of pride that you have when you walk into one of those places that you built to see a show with your family or to uh, when you when you think about the amount of people that ride that train every single day to work. And it's because, you know, you you may have played a small part in that. It, it really starts to change things, even for. You know, the, the, the business development rep that contacted the developer first for the construction company right yeah I, I mean you know i do it you know i'm being a salesperson you know when i when i um drive across or drive past businesses where i've sold them something i you know i usually say oh yeah i sold them a counting system yep. or something like that and it and it does give you a sense of pride because you actually you just feel it in your stomach and i can imagine that if you're in construction and you're you're sitting in a stadium where um you help build that or the bridge or the whatever, it, it must give you a sense of pride. Oh yeah, for sure. We, um, here locally, I live in, in, a, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, dead center, United States. And, uh, the, the college world series for college baseball is played mm -hmm. here every year. And right. my favorite project they are, I ever got to work on was that, that stadium. I went into engineering to hope, hopefully work on stadiums. I got to work on that one. And now every June we get to enjoy it as a family because we go to games 
uh, with the kids every June. So yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to live that out. So what is it that people can be doing there for to, to excite people when younger people to, to, to get into their industry? Well, one of the first things you can do is, is start to get in touch with them sooner, right? Like a, a lot of people have uh, talk about, um, you know, hitting students in their junior, senior at, at, uh, at university for, for college fairs or, or such and, and trying to promote your company. But you can be doing that sooner, right? You can be doing that in, in uh, secondary school or in high school, right? You can be doing that in, in a sense uh, where um, you're bringing the local community in. You can, you can be reaching out to uh, uh, children of your employees, right? Like you, your, your employees have kids that are going to be working their way up. Is the experience that your employee has, is it painting your company in a positive light for their kids? <laughs> or is it, uh, is it making their kids think, I never want to have a job like that, right? So those are some of the ways that you can be, you know, touching base with them earlier. But th some of the other things as, as they start to, you know, learn about your company, um, in, in, in university and, and see who they are, it, it's really good to have that message of here's how we're empowering our employees. Here's how we're empowering our, com our community, right? Uh, the community engagement aspect of it. And, and that's where you can start talking about things like digitally transforming or talking about things like um, doing uh, service projects for the, for the community or doing things People want to be a part of a company today and, and, and know that they're making an impact. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's not just in the work that they do every day, but in how that company is leaving an imprint on society around it. Right. And you, you see a lot of negative press of, of uh, what companies are doing to negatively impact the environment or the society around them. Um, but there's just as much positive out there if you know where to look and or you are that company trying to promote it. And I guess that um, by by doing that outreach at the same time, what you're doing is that you're you're in effect, you're saying, hello, we're here. Hello, we're here. And and you're getting the um, the positive things about that. That company obviously cares because they're getting involved in the community. They're getting involved in whatever it is but you're also getting the visit visibility in terms of the of that of your particular market or vertical yep yeah you want the you want the community to feel like you know if that company had to leave yeah they would be they would be worse off right as a community yeah. like it would hurt them if you left not good riddance right <laughs> yes and so that's that's the kind of um that's the kind of message that you can start propagating even when folks are younger, because they'll feel that that uh, that sense of pride of then as they get older. Yeah. Now I work for that company. So that could be things like also like sponsoring sports teams or yep. um, sponsoring the sports coach or something like that. Just get, getting that visibility within the, the school or the college or the university. Yep. Or sponsoring local community events, local fundraisers. Um, uh, the, the, you know, golf outings for, for, uh, fundraisers, all sorts of things, just having that presence and, 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 and putting on a, a you know, a, a positive attitude with it, right. Not a, we have to be here or, or we're going to, uh, get a negative mark, but actually wanting to be there and wanting to, to be a part of the community. And, and, and I guess this then has this, so you're what you're doing is that you're making sure that the, the um, I mean, from a construction point of view, also, you need to get over the fact that it's not just um, dirty boots and stuff like that. But there's yep. also, you know, there's a, you know, you, you'll find that some people will say, I don't want to work at a desk. I want to work outside. Yep. Yeah. You or know, be wanna, creative I'll, even. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is, well, you know, so, so, so explain to us how a creative could, could work in construction. Yeah. That's so. <laughs> I've got the wrong view set up here because th this shelf right here beside me is, is all my, my collector Lego sets. Right. So like I'm a, I'm a, a nerd by trade, but uh, 
I grew up building Legos. I grew up sketching um, stadiums, like I mentioned. And, and so I was, I had good grades in the arts and I had, I had a lot of fun, you know, building with my hands. And, and I only built the Lego set, typically only built it one time. Then the directions got thrown in a box and the Legos got turned into something entirely different, right? And, uh, and so those, if, if you're any sort of creative person, construction is that it, it is large Legos, <laughs> really, really yeah. big Legos, uh, and giant facilities. And, um, and you could, you could be the best at, um, welding steel in the industry. And that's, that is an art form to do it in certain ways that, that makes some of the, 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 um, pieces of art that are at the entrance of, of, of some of the world's most famous facilities, right? Or if you think of, think of some of the, the most recognizable structures in the world, everyone knows the roof of the Sydney Opera House. Yes. Well, somebody drew that, right? And, uh, and, and so the, those architects are, are just as important to the construction phase. And that, that's where the creative juices can really start to flow. Now, obviously, as the engineers, we try to figure out how to build whatever the, the architect just drew, you know, physically. But uh, but those sorts of things are are recognizable for a reason. Yeah, and I think it's something that the creative often is seen as not necessarily a, um, a a position that you would have on in construction. You know, there's, right. there's leader, leadership positions because um, there's health and safety positions. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, and and so um, there's a there's a there's a, as you say there's a lot of the traditional things that you would get in a company required within a, a construction environment accounting for example because if you're exactly. building a big project you need to account for all the different things and buy them from the different suppliers and 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 it builds up into the the budget that you have so yeah and the and in the last few years procurement people have been vitally important with some of the material shortages with the inflation rates and things of that nature their role becomes incredibly important because because you need to know when to buy it before yeah. you lose your price but before it's not too early to be on the site and things like that yeah 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 and that's one of the things about um uh, about procurement always is about making sure you're getting the right price and the right quality but you've also got to get it there at the right time um, and yep. if you're shipping something from South Korea, um, you know, that that will have an impact because it will take, you know, to, to, if you shout, to ship something from South Korea to, to the UK, it takes six weeks. Yep. So, yeah, um, I mean, you, know, you know, there's a there's a timing element. Exactly. You, you've got to order it soon enough to get it on site for the schedule. And what are the, we're building a new high school here in the, the city I live in. Uh, all the all the roofing material they purchased a year in advance because of some of the supply shortages. And so th they um, had to rent a nearby parking lot to store it uh, for this extra year. So it's just sitting there uh, in, in this parking lot over by the high school because they didn't want to have that issue where it held up the schedule when it was time. Yeah. So is there, I mean, what, is there anything else that we could be doing in terms of, um, empowering people to come into your industry. Yeah. So one of the last things that, uh, that I like to have fun with, I, you know, a little bit older, I, I grew up on some of the really good old cartoons. Um, I remember when, when I was first coming into the industry and, in in technology was really starting to change. I, I, I'd, I'd come to work and it'd feel like we're the, in the Flintstones. Right. We, we were pushing paper around. We had flip phones. We had all this stuff. And then I'd go home and I'd be the Jetsons. I'd have, you know, AirPlay and, and, and an iPhone and all this kind of stuff and, and, and uh, you know, FaceTime and video calling. And we just didn't have that at work. We, we still had fax machines. Right. And so um, the, the other thing that you can do is is keep up on your technology, keep up on on the changing times. I, th I think it took almost uh, four years from the, from the launch of the iPhone for, for our company to decide that maybe a mobile app would be a good thing to build, right? And, uh, and then once we built it, you couldn't pry it from the hands of the, of the crews out in the field. They loved it. And, uh, and then, you know, multiple mobile apps spun off of that. 
And before it was all paper. And, and that was, I think that was the number one savings that we had is, is we cut um, processing time of the paper at the end of the day down between a half hour and an hour, depending on the job site. So that meant those people were going home that much sooner to their families, right? And so when you're a, when you're a student coming out of university and you go and you tour one company and they're still moving around the paper and you go and you tour another company and they've got all this these new digital solutions and they're you know, showing you the model or you're putting on the HoloLens, you know, which one are you as a student who's grown up with apps your entire life, which one are you gonna select? Exactly. And so that's what they know. Uh, it's it's inherent to them these days. And, and so attracting that top talent will really come down to, you know, how can we best work with what they know? So we've had a question. So I don't know if you okay. can um, um, answer this, uh, AJ. This is a question here from from um, uh, Viren, which is uh, he appreciates that you're in the construction industry, but you do have an, a bit of an IT um, background as well. Mm -hmm. Um, how would you transpose for the IT industry to keep younger people engaged and retained? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So the, the IT industry is probably one of the hardest people, especially or hardest industries for retainage, uh, because they they're being poached uh, mm. almost all the time. And <clears throat> again, it comes back to uh, knowing what your purpose is, right? So um, people today want to be a part of something. Uh, and want to know how they make a difference. Yeah. So one of the things that, that uh, you'll, you'll have to get really good at is explaining to them how their role, whatever it is, makes a difference. Um, I have my, my brother, for example, works for a, in the IT industry and he's in the upgrade center and he absolutely loves his job. All he does is he helps upgrade customers, right? And, uh, and, but he, he understands where that adds value and why it, to a lot of people, it might be very monotonous, but, uh, but if you understand your purpose and you understand how it, how it's adding value to, um, your customers, then that, uh, that really helps in, in, in maintaining a, a positive working environment for that employee. The other thing that's good. It's going to be hard for every company, but it, it'll come down to recognition then as well, right? So, um, if uh, if people don't feel like they're valued, then uh, then that you you increase the risk as well for that retainage. So, um, take a hard look at your recognition program and and see. Uh, I, I I worked for a company for a little bit where we were able to do peer to peer recognition, and I thought that was one yeah. of the coolest programs. Uh, that uh, that I'd seen, and uh, and so maybe take a look at something along those lines. Fantastic. I hope that um, uh, helped you, um, uh, Viren. Um, hope that was useful. AJ, thank you so much for coming on today. The, the twenty minutes just go very very quickly. Yes, um, they do. Thank you for coming on and sharing your insight. I mean, I I just think it's so important that um, for all organisations to to get involved in the community because. That there's lots of reasons to do it. Some of them are quite selfish. Some of them are, are about making sure that you're actually part of the community. But right. it's also about making sure that you um, you get the right stuff. So um, so thank you. Remind people where they where they can get hold of you, AJ. Yeah, just uh, real simple on LinkedIn. Waters AJ uh, or search AJ Waters. I I don't know of. Very many others like me out there with the initials, but uh, otherwise, aj.waters at innate, I-N-E-I-G-H-T dot com. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on today, AJ. It's been great. And thank you for sharing your, your knowledge. Yeah, thank you, Tim. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.